Hey everybody, welcome. It's Ian O'Byrne. Uh, this is uh, things that I've been working on over the last week. We're going to take a look at newsletter uh, 126. This is too long, didn't read my weekly newsletter looking at uh, teaching and learning in tech. Um, this week, uh, I'm recording this on Sunday, December 3rd, 2017. Uh, I spent most of my week either wrapping up some of my classes for the semester uh, but most importantly, I went to Tampa, Florida for the conference uh, for the Literacy Research Association uh, annual meeting. Uh, it was good to get out there and see a bunch of uh, friends uh, and colleagues and, uh, you know, spend a little bit of time talking about research and, and literacy. Um, I did not have a chance to present uh, this year, but I uh, was a discussant in three sessions and um, it was a really interesting year this year at LRA. Um, the last couple of years, I think we've seen uh, some of the, the 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 issues in society bubbling up, uh, and you know they're bubbling up through our conference as well. Uh, still trying to make sense of the the permutations of it, uh, but one of the themes this year, I think, was a, a heavy thread of like social justice. And, you know, empowering students and having uh, learners create like critical profiles or like critical alternatives to um, the profiles that they normally have or the identities that they have. And those being like critiques of society or what society wants you to be. Um, it's really, really deep stuff, but really interesting for me. But it was good to to see other, you know, research scholars and, and you know, check in with people and, uh, you know, a couple different opportunities uh, in, you know, in the future. Um, but we'll, we'll see what comes of it. Um, so once again, we're digging into issue 126. I had a lot of stuff that I shared behind the scenes and worked on behind the scenes, but nothing really uh, of note to share out this week. One of the big things that um, I'm going to be researching and thinking about over the next 12 months is intersectionality. This is something that popped up on my radar a, a little over a year ago. A colleague and friend of mine, Ebony Thomas, uh, sent out, uh, as we were putting proposals together for LRA, she sent out a note on framing one of the areas that we were looking at around intersectionality. And, you know, I honestly didn't know that much about it. And then this was one of those things that this week at LRA, it seems like those that were in the know all were talking about intersectionality and how to make sense of it. So I'm going to start digging into this and what it all means and what it means for your research in your classroom and also your everyday actions. And so I'll be digging in more, um, but this video by Teaching Tolerance is a good way to get started. Uh, so definitely recommend taking a peek at it and figuring out what it means for you. This week we also had a lot of debate about, once again, laptops in lecture halls and in meetings and stuff like that. And it was all spawned by this post here in the New York Times. Um, most of the stuff that she indicates in the piece uh, that Susan Zdarnarski indicates in the piece, most of it I, I, I guess I don't agree with. Um, but I, I think that it's important that you read this and figure out where you stand on the issue and then click through some of the other links that I shared below. Um, and so it's interesting to take a look and figure out where you stand. And more importantly, uh, what does this mean for you and your daily interactions and possibly you as a, as a teacher or a student. Once again, we're still talking about the net neutrality fight. Um, some interesting things over the last week. Uh, Ajit Pai, the FCC commissioner, has basically, uh, in, you know, went on, he's gone on the attack, attacking Twitter, attacking people that promote the free and open internet, saying that we are the real problem, not uh, these regulations. Um, so it's interesting seeing, and also uh, some of these arguments have just a fundamental um, misunderstanding uh, about how the internet works. Now the hope is that this is just stuff that, you know, possibly the, the commissioner and others, perhaps they just don't understand how the internet works. Um, but, you know, there might be a deeper, more insidious reason for um, them spreading this misinformation. 
Um, this morning I, I saw, and this is after I've sent out the newsletter, this morning I saw that uh, recent research shows that uh, the, the, the comments that many of us left behind, uh, you know, the last public round of feedback, some of those comments that were sent behind, uh, left behind, uh, they had something like 500,000 that were pro, uh, that they, they wanted a repeal to new, to net neutrality and they are all from like bots and from phony, uh, email sources. So, um, I definitely recommend reading this piece in the Atlantic, um, to take a look at, you know, Ian Bogos does a really good job of, of talking about the, the argument and the larger issues in it. Um, by all means, it's not a simple thing to figure out, but it's one of those things that we have to, to take a little bit of time to think about, but, uh, we need to fight. I believe we need to fight. Um, you know, we, we need to make sure that there is a better way. Great piece by Dan Baer on machine learning and helping us understand the brain. Uh, I'm an educational psychologist, or at least that's what it says on one of my diplomas. And I, I was intrigued by this piece to, to the, that frames thinking and learning from the context of, uh, machine learning or, you know, like a, a, co a computational thinking frame of view. One of the things that I, I was talking with people about at LRA this week was a focus and possibly some research or, or theory or, or framing of a theory on computational thinking and computational participation. And so this really touched the nerve with me in a good way. Um, so it's interesting to think about it because, you know, I think about the ways in which we think and learn and, and ways to explain that to others. And it was really interesting seeing the framing there. Also, I might note that this massive psi pu uh, publication that this was originally, this was a piece that I saw in Salon, but the original piece on Massive uh, Psy is the, the website, or Massive. Uh, this is a really cool website um, that I came across just because I was clicking back through the links. And it looks like a super sciencey version of the conversation where I, I read a lot and, I some, and I'm hoping to publish uh, there soon. But this looks like a pretty cool website that I immediately added to my RSS feeds. So definitely recommend this. And if you're somebody that tracks stuff online, check out that massive link and see what else is there. In the context, in the context of all of this, um, one of the things that uh, came up this week also in my thread is what is the real job of, of an educator? And one of the, th the things that we're, that, that came up in the sessions at LRA is that you know, perhaps one of the challenges here is that we need to provide opportunities for our students to, you know, hold two thoughts in their head and, you know, and, and engage in cognitive dissonance. But at the same time, um, one of the people in the sessions right before I walked out of the door uh, talked about the need to develop epistemic innocence in our students. And, uh, you know, I was really um, drawn to that because it's just it's a mindset that it, you know, you're going to learn something or think about something and it's okay if you don't understand it. It's okay if you don't get it. Um, there's not a need to understand or, or promote or support everything. There might be some things that you learn that you just don't quite get and that's fine. Um, and, and that's one of those skill sets that we have to, to try and build into our learners. Um, so a great piece by Annie Hargraves there to, to unpack that. And last but not least in the reading section is, thinking about exercise um, you know there's a lot of uh, anecdotal data on using exercise or, or, or walking as a way to clear your mind and prepare for work there's a lot of stories about Steve Jobs you know having walking meetings to talk to walk and talk through ideas um, I wish that I had more of this in, in my meetings. <laughs> um, I know that every once in a while I'll have my grad assistant and I, we will go for a walk and talk. Um, cause I think it's a little bit easier, uh, to make sense of things. And, and Charleston is a great city to do that. Um, and so this piece in open culture thinks, uh, takes a look at it and says, okay, you know, if you think about the use of walking or physical, uh, exercise. You know, as you age, one of the things you want to do is think about your mental health and you want to think about ways to improve your mental health. 
this piece in open culture is suggesting that you know you are strengthening those connections and strengthening the brain through that physical exercise or physical activity um, and by all means if you've gotten down to this part in the newsletter definitely check out this really cool list from wired on uh, games outdoor games for kids um, this popped up in my feed it's a couple of years old but it popped up in my feed and I'm thinking that I'm gonna work with my kids over the next couple of months my two children uh, to try and make these games happen uh, in our backyard um, most of the games we've seen and played with but some we have not um, in the make section uh, I took this straight on as a make uh, story and so this is a really nice post talking about a sixth grade uh, sorry third grade classroom that planned and built up a maker space uh, in their school so they planned it got some funding built it um, and so this goes through their guidelines and their steps in order to make this happen wrapping things up uh, I saw that the wrinkle in time movies coming out soon um, so I'm gonna start reading this with my son before uh, we go see the movie but a, a great quote talking about um, you know what you see and what you focus on and what you don't see and what you don't focus on is a way to really um, engage us and, and make us think deeply about uh, you know the things that we hold dear or think that we think are important uh, so once again this is issue number 126 for too long didn't read this is my weekly newsletter um, if you don't subscribe already head on over to wioburn.com uh, you can get pretty much all of the links all of the blog posts for everything I have my videos are there uh, the the content from those uh, Instagram and Flickr images are there as well uh, I'm slowly trying to figure out a good way to fold the newsletter uh, integrate the newsletter a little bit better into my website but that's still a work in progress so for now head on over to the newsletter section or wioburn.com slash tldr um, and subscribe so that you can get that right in your mailbox um, we're nearing the end of the year and as we head into the new year I got some things that are on their way out so I think you'll be interested um, so once again uh, have a great rest of the week hopefully this was of value to you uh, if you do not subscribe already to the YouTube channel or to the newsletter please go ahead and do so so we can take it uh, stay in touch I definitely appreciate it. And once again, thank you for listening.